All right, everybody. <clears throat> Good morning. It's just after nine o'clock, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, before I do that, uh, since it is the uh, week of Father's Day, I want to give a uh, special and warm-hearted uh, Happy Father's Day to everybody in advance of uh, this coming Sunday. If uh, if you are with us and you have children today, um, you know what a special thing that is for. So again, uh, from Messer Financial and myself, uh, Jeff Street, and obviously our good friend Chad, we want to wish all of you fathers out there a very happy Father's Day. So with that, uh, good morning and welcome to another webinar Wednesday with Messer Financial Group. We're excited to have our good friend Chad Canise with us today from Oxford Life. We're going to do uh, basically a, a return to basics and talk a little bit about the foundation of life insurance. Our good friend Chad is vastly experienced in life and annuities and med subs, and we'll round all that back into uh, Oxford and the advantages that they provide to you, the agent in the field, and the products that you can provide to your clients that they uh, they have that are excellent in all categories. But we wanted to go back and just kind of start over a little bit as a little bit of a refresher. Realize a lot of you joining us today have done a lot of business with the uh, MedSups and Med Advantage plans over the last few months. And it's always good to go back and knock the cobwebs off and start to consider other product lines that maybe you haven't spoken with your clients about. And it's a good reason to go back and touch. We do hope that uh, you have done your due diligence as far as checking back with your clients. If you have written some of those senior products to make sure that they've gotten their membership cards or that they have used those products. And if they've had any issues that you're there to help them. It's the best way to defend and to grow your book is to make sure that they realize that you are their ad advocate uh, and their advisory counsel for their, their products in terms of insurance. So again, this is a great opportunity for you guys to brush back up on the fundamentals of life insurance and also a good reason to go back and touch those clients and make sure that they have the coverage that they need and to meet any concerns that they have. So this morning, again, we've got our good friend Chad Canese from Oxford Life. Got a ton of experience to share with uh, us, and we're happy to have him and Oxford uh, present with us this morning. We're going to talk again about the basics of life insurance, do a brief synopsis as far as uh, what each branch would be, whether that's term or permanent, and even the hybrid of those, the universal. Talk a little bit about how Oxford made its decisions with the products that they chose to focus on and the markets that they uh, wanted to serve uh, with great intensity. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my good friend, Chad Canese, and Chad's going to walk us through, and then uh, we'll wrap it up with some Q&A and uh, talk a little bit about how that will apply to uh, next week's second part of this, where we'll wrap it all in and bring it together for the purpose of serving your clients. So good morning, Chad, and thanks for being here. You bet. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Uh, appreciate it, and as always, uh, appreciate the opportunity. So uh, great to work with you and, and Messer Financial. So uh, thank you again, and thanks to everyone in attendance. And uh, as Jeff mentioned, I'm Chad Knese. I'm one of the regionals here at Oxford Life. And uh, right now, everyone is looking at the uh, Oxford Life website. Uh, nice and easy to find, OxfordLife.com. We'll transition a little bit more to that uh, at the end of the webinar and, and probably more specifically next week, as Jeff mentioned. We want to go to kind of part two of this and talk more case specifics, a little bit of case design, not just with final expense, but single premium life opportunities, annuities, and, and kind of that uh, med sub product for the complete financial package for your client. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and take everyone over to uh, my other screen here uh, that's gonna talk about and uh, go through our PowerPoint. Life Insurance 101. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, we wanna get kind of back to the basics of life insurance. And uh, some of this will be fairly elementary, fairly raw, I know, to, to a lot of you. Uh, but we'll just kind of transition through it. And uh, again, as Jeff mentioned, kind of bring you to the point wh why we see the demand we do in, in kind of the markets that, that we chose and we serve at Oxford Life. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and, and first start out pretty basic. And that's just with some of the, the, the basic uh, life insurance terms. Uh, death benefit. Of course, as, as we know, that's the amount of coverage purchased for your beneficiaries. Uh, the beneficiary is the person you designate uh, for your life insurance be benefit. And as we know, uh, the benefit when it is a life insurance policy is a tax-free death benefit. Still one of the unique things, untouched, unmatched by any other product in any other industry. It's the tax-free death benefit to the beneficiary. 
We have uh, underwriting and really today various forms of it, but underwriting in, it, in its basic element, it's the questions, <clears throat> excuse me, about the client's health. And then a lot of times the client's financial condition that help the carrier or the insurance company determine whether or not a client qualifi qualifies for coverage. So again, a lot of times it's not just whenever we think of underwriting, we think of health, but a lot of times in a lot of areas of underwriting, there's also that financial component to uh, try and qualify and, and, and make sure a, a client's adequately covered as well. There's the premiums, uh, the amount that, uh, or the payment that you make to the carrier uh, to, to purchase the insurance. And premiums, these, uh, this day and age, kind of take a lot of forms and shapes as well. Uh, you can single pay, you can do 10 pay policies, uh, you can do continuous pay options, and uh, a lot of options even have that return of premium where uh, any and all the premium you've paid into, you can access, you can pull back later from a, a cash value standpoint or just a, a return of premium option. Now, there are, and Jeff kind of mentioned it, uh, a few basic types of, of life insurance. Probably most notable and the most common is term insurance. We have uh, universal life insurance, which takes on a few of its own forms, a few of its own shapes. Uh, we have whole life insurance, and we even add another category. We, we kind of see it where final expense is becoming its own kind of market. Uh, really, again, there, there are probably the three term universal, which again, in universal, you can have guaranteed universal, traditional universal, index universal life, variable universal life. So there's a lot of kind of offshoots from just each of these categories. Uh, and then again, we've added now what we think is final expense as its own specific marketplace as a, as a type of life insurance. Let's just uh, look for a second at each of these. But term insurance, as it indicates, it's available for a specific number of years. And term insurance has really kind of changed over the years as well. Uh, you know, most commonly you see it in 10 to 30 year term periods. And in, in uh, the, the, the need for demand and, and the growing market and the number of carriers and everybody trying to differentiate, you even see this change from a, a one year term policy uh, in some cases that you can now purchase uh, from five up to 40, 45 years. So Again, the market really does continue to evolve, but still in its most basic element, policies are anywhere from 10 to 30 year in, in, in duration. The term is the most popular of life insurance products, and a lot of the reasons, uh, it tends to be more affordable than other types of coverage. But just as it indicates, term insurance is kind of, Jeff, I think you put it this way, rented insurance, right? You get it for that specific number of years, whether you've taken a 10 or 20 year period, the premium and the death benefit remains consistent throughout the term of the policy, but should you die after the term expires, your beneficiaries don't receive the death benefit. So you're covered for that specific period of time which you've chosen along with your client. So while there are some benefits, you're typically insuring a specific period of time in your life, uh, maybe a specific asset like a mortgage uh, term insurance where you know you're, you're you're matching it up to the to the years remaining on your mortgage, but it is for a specific and finite number of years. Now universal life, it's a lifetime policy that does accumulate cash value. And that cash value is typically based on the performance of investments. Now, here's where universal life can take on a, a handful of different looks. Uh, you have now index universal life, which may more cl closely mirror uh, like an, an indexed annuity. You, you have performance tied to various indexes that can accumulate the cash value inside of that contract. You have traditional universal life policies uh, pegged to specific uh, asset accumulation. You also have variable uh, universal life, which is again now just much more like a variable annuity product, up and down with the market 
little bit more fluctuation along with it. But it still has a, a varying cash value inside of the contract, but a lot of times a, uh, a set death benefit available to the client. But if those investments underperform, your insurance premiums can increase. So you have this kind of uh, volatility inside of your contract. You can borrow against the policy if you need, but any outstanding loan is going to be deducted from the death benefit uh, that's provided to your beneficiary. So this policy is a little bit more of a risk than other some of the other types of life insurance. Uh, just because of, again, the, the potential that premiums can change on a client depending upon the uh, performance of those investments. Oxford Life, to, to talk about us specifically, we feel and, and we serve more of a senior market. And as a result, we tend to think that uh, a universal life policy takes on a little bit more risk for some of these same reasons. People that are on more of a set budget so while universal life certainly has its place in, in, the, in the market, uh, we feel that it's not as appropriate, just in our opinion, for some of that senior space. Just because it can get more expensive, it can become a little bit more volatile as far as the, the premium expectations. Now, there's whole life insurance, and just as the name indicates, it lasts for your whole life. You know, premiums remain the same each year and the policy pays out the death benefit after you die to the beneficiary. Now, many whole life insurance policies have a cash value that you can also access through a policy loan uh, for health expenses, illnesses, anything like that that you might need to touch or need to get access to. Now, whole life insurance, it can be more expensive than, than term, and even universal life or sometimes guaranteed universal life, but there is also more comprehensive coverage. It's typically going to be a level death benefit and a level premium guaranteed for your client, again, over the life of the contract. Now, final expense, and, and final expense in most of its forms is a whole life design. There can be some variations to that. But again, we kind of put final expense in its own category just because the death benefit is used to cover final expenses and uh, maybe any uh, final medical expenses uh, that have accumulated after someone's passed away. And there's a more specific kind of measure as far as the amounts that you purchase whenever it comes to final expense. The premiums, or I'm sorry, the, 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 the face amounts usually will vary from as, as low as 5000 up to fifty. some cases even as little as $2,000, uh, to typically $50,000 worth of death benefit. And with final expense, almost anyone can qualify uh, to, to purchase it, regardless of their age or health. Once again, there's a lot of variations inside of this category as far as a, uh, a simplified issue to a guarantee issue product where a client cannot be denied coverage. And again, they're to cover a specific amount, a specific debt benefit. Uh, whenever a client passes away for final expense needs. Now, we've already kind of mentioned a little bit about underwriting, but it, it's basically the process uh, that evaluates the risk and exposure for potential clients. From a carrier standpoint, it determines how much coverage a client should receive, how much they should pay for it, or even a lot of times whether or not the carrier is willing to accept the risk and, and issue a policy. There's a lot of, uh, again, elements to underwriting that, that we we see and, and uh, evolve in this market here today. There's fully underwritten, which is probably the more traditional style of life insurance, where it asks a number of health questions, not just health questions, but a lot of times financial questions of a client, uh, just again, to determine their availability for coverage. Uh, it also requires medical tests and details of medical records. So it's kind of that full onset evaluation of a client, blood draws, urine, things like that, uh, where they're going to go through the full evaluation of a client. It's a longer process, but it's more suited to a client condition in their lifestyle. So 
uh, a lot of times if you've got a really healthy client, um, you know, they, they might be better off with the path of a fully underwritten policy. Healthier clients can qualify for better coverage and a lot of times better rates. But again, this process in most cases is longer process. Uh, anybody out there that's written life insurance, you know, or maybe you've even just heard, you know, some of the, the great parts of it, but also some of those horror stories, you know, where you're into a six, nine, you know, 12 week process for underwriting results on a client, scheduling medical exams and everything that kind of goes along with it. There's the simplified issue market, which is growing and uh, with access to client records and information and everything else today, uh, we feel even becoming a bigger part of the insurance industry. You really just ask a few questions about the client's medical history. There's no medical exam. There's no request for fluids. Uh, it's just in a lot of cases, again, as it says, simplified issue or kind of an abbreviated underwriting process. Now, what is interesting when it, when it comes to insurance, and we'll talk about some of these stats as we go along, and I guess right now maybe as good a time as any, but a lot of clients will admit and, and have admitted through a number of studies out there, most of them through LIMRA, but uh, more than half of the market admits that they are more likely to buy life insurance if it didn't require a life insurance exam. So whether or not clients are healthy or not, they're just turned off by the process of it. Kind of the test, if you will, the, the, the need to get the medical records, the, the going through the fluids and everything else. So simplified issue for this reason is growing. I mean, you, you see it, you see the ads for it. Uh, a lot of times you can now write clients you know, younger ages, up to 250, maybe even 500,000 without any kind of an exam at all. Uh, there's just more availability to metal, medical records this day, client lifestyle and everything else that we're able to do simplified issue. And with Oxford Life, again, another one of those quick commercials, but we feel we've taken simplified issue to the next generation. Uh, we actually have the ability to, to do an assessment of a client with a few medical questions, and we can underwrite really in a matter of, of seconds. Uh, we, we do a quick prescription check on a client, and we can, again, come back with a true point-of-sale decision uh, in a matter of 10 to 15 seconds. So, again, that's that next evolution of underwriting where just with some access to, to medical records or even just not even medical records, a client's prescription history, we're able to determine uh, the availability for coverage. Now, another category here is guaranteed issue. And this is just kind of as it sounds, a uh, client answers some questions that might affect uh, some of the premium payment, uh, but there's no exam for qualification and uh, clients are coverage, uh, covered uh, for death benefit, regardless of health conditions. So this is kind of that category when all else fails, a client can't cover it, can't get coverage uh, through fully underwritten or maybe even simplified issue. You've got the ability to turn to a guaranteed issue product. Now, of course, you do pay more for each and every one of these levels, right? A, a fully underwritten might be some of the best option for your client but they've got to go through the process to try and qualify for it. Simplified issue, that next category, guarantee issue, you know, easy, quick process to qualify for it, but the client's going to pay, uh, pay for the result of it. Now, out of all of these, and, and again, probably should say here that life insurance is important. We're, we're a life insurance advocate as, as the life insurance carrier. So whichever option you choose, whichever one you write, we completely and 100% agree that it's just important to spread awareness of life insurance because the marketplace today uh, is, again, changing. Uh, it, it's easier to get insurance. It's easier to qualify for it. But yet we see the market diminishing for it. In fact, in the 1960s, 72 percent, uh, and again, this is per LIMRA, but 72 percent of Americans owned life insurance. In the 90s, 
that had uh, dwindled to about 55%. And today, depending upon how you want to carve it out or what, the bottom line there indicates indicates it, but about 45% of households have life insurance. It's a 50-year low. So whether it's permanent, term, whatever kind of insurance, we just encourage that you talk to your clients about it, whichever one fits them, whichever one fits their lifestyle or the market that you want to work in. For Oxford Life, that's been final expense. And the reason we got to this position in this place, we're really more of a senior uh, senior market. Between our life and annuity and, and MedSup products, we're kind of that 50 and above, 60 and above space. And as we look at the statistics, we just feel this is the best place for us. One, the baby boomers. We can't ignore the fact and, and just kind of the demographics of it. First baby boomers started turning 65 in 2011. The U.S. population age 65 and over is going to double by the year 2030. So that means one out of five Americans or around some 72 million people are going to be 65 and over uh, within the next you know, uh, decade. And again, back to that fact that almost 45%, not just of seniors, but of households in general are not covered by life insurance of any kind. So we've got, uh, again, simplified issue, final expense products at Oxford Life. Simplified issue because clients have said they want it, right? An easy issue process without the, the requirement for an exam. Whole life insurance, because it eliminates some of that uh, uncertainty. It's predictable. It's level premium and it's level death benefit for a specific amount of coverage. And with final expense, our policy goes from five to 30,000 because we're again trying to meet the needs of that, that final expense, which is so underserved. Now, the reason being uh, the cost of a funeral which is the uh, most identifiable reason for, you know, final expense. It's, it's the, the funeral itself. It might be some of those other medical expenses and everything else that popped up, or it might be just some additional funds to get somebody on their feet after someone passes away. But the cost of a funeral is not going down. In, in fact, in 2012, the average was $8,300. You tack on inflation, you roll that out to the year 2030, and you're looking at more than 14000 and just basic final expense cost. And another reason we want to serve this market, there really is no other way to pay for it. Government sponsored death benefits don't do it. For those that qualify, uh, Social Security provides either one-time payment of $255 to a spouse or a minor child for final ex or for final expense or death. And if you or your clients are veterans, uh, again, assuming you can qualify for it, it's only $300. So there really is no other way to pay for this other than you, you privately pay, uh, you insure. Uh, uh, an unfortunate thing to see these days, but you, you see it all the time. I know I do. And uh, again, I guess uh, as an insurance agent, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, unfortunate, depressing to get, but all of the GoFundMe requests for someone's final expense cost. So again, you either privately pay, you privately insure it, you, you look to the assistance of others through some kind of GoFundMe account, or you uh, pick up and, and uh, you insure it through a carrier like Oxford Life. So final expense provides a peace of mind for loved ones. You know, you don't leave uh, loved ones worrying about money at the time that they're grieving or after a time that you've passed away. Certainly not a legacy that anyone wants to leave. And again, aim to kind of cover the cost of funeral and any other costs that popped up after someone's passed away. And the benefit of a final expense product coverage cannot be altered due to, to health issues. Once a client's been issued coverage, they pay the premiums, it's guaranteed premium and it is guaranteed death benefit. Now, other things, uh, and, and kind of on that same note, but funerals are expensive. Uh, you know, we, we see the, 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 the cost of funerals growing and growing each day and, and, and more often. And uh, I'm sorry, we've, we've got a slide stuck in here that uh, I, I forgot was included. So um, 
you know what? We'll, we'll hit it real quick though, because it's, it's worth mentioning. But um, this walks us through an example of a uh, a client. Uh, you know what? In, in fact, uh, I'm going to skip this. Uh, this is meant to be, and we're going to come to this one for uh, uh, next week. So if you're wondering what this slide looks like, come back, tune in next week. We're going to revisit it then. Uh, that's one of our case examples for uh, kind of determining some cost for final expense. So uh, as the question asks, you know, how much do you need? Well, a lot of times that depends upon your current space. When it comes to the final expense marketplace, uh, we've, we've got, and there's some different reference sites, uh, a few of them listed below here that you can cut and paste, but real easy to find. Um, but I think it's valuable to keep these things handy whenever you visit a client. Matter of fact, on the back of our final expense brochure, we've listed a place where you can itemize any and all of the basic funeral expenses with your client. Because it's important that we kind of bring uh, to reality with clients what is the real cost of of a funeral. Uh, a lot of people take, make, tend to make guesses and everything else, but whenever it's laid out there, and you know is kind of the way that it's laid out here on your screen, to give them some real options. So just looking at the casket as an example, it's down here at the bottom. But sometimes it's it's fun to kind of quiz clients on what they think is the real cost of a casket in around their area. So here's a value buy. Uh, maybe you know you you can get one for three hundred and forty five dollars. The average is about twenty three. You want to go to the best. You're looking for kind of the Rolls Royce of of uh, caskets. That might cost as much as twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. So again, Mr. And Mrs. Client, what what do you think? You know, where are you going to be? Value, average, do you want the best of the best? But we need to, you know, assess some of these things in advance. And we also, on top of that, need to be able to cover and, and determine how much coverage you need whenever you do pass away to help, you know, your beneficiaries, to help your kids cover some of the cost of it. So, again, this is just kind of a nice snapshot of something to keep handy. And, Jeff, uh, we to make this available to you. We've got another piece that lets you kind of itemize this with your clients for kind of that value average or the best coverage. But a nice uh, final expense option to kind of share and use with your clients. And this just goes kind of on uh, with some uh, additional expenses, some of the viewing fees uh, and how the cost of a funeral has escalated over the years. Again, uh, up to, you know, that 83 and on its way to that, you know, $14,000 of final expense by uh, the year 2030. Now, Oxford Life, again, I've kind of mentioned it, and this is, I guess, my opportunity for the quick commercial, but all of our policies are whole life. So, insurance designed to last for a client's lifetime. Our premiums and the benefits, they're guaranteed. They are designed specifically to meet final expense costs, uh, final expense needs. We do issue amounts from five to thirty thousand. Our policies do accumulate some cash value if you need it, uh, that clients can access in the way of uh, policy loans for health conditions, emergencies, whatever else it might be. But once that policy is issued, and you're going to know it right then and there on the spot with your client through our point of sale decision, whether or not they've been offered coverage it can't be canceled. As long as they continue to pay the premium, it is level premium and it's a lifetime benefit. That death benefit, it's passed on to a beneficiaries, again, income tax-free, something no other product, no other industry, uh, no other uh, opportunity exists. Uh, again, can't be altered due to health conditions. Oxford Life, uh, one of our claims to fame, we are almost always some of the lowest premiums available for final expense life insurance. We make it really convenient as far as methods of payment. You can do it on a monthly basis, quarterly, semi-annual, annual, and we do have some single premium life options, which we'll touch a little bit more upon next week. We do social security draft dates where we can draft from a client's uh, social security payment the day that it hits just to make funding and payment and, and, the, and the, the persistency of that payment a little bit easier for you 
and for your client. And in addition to all that, one of the biggest, best things that we've got going, again, it's that simplified issue. We're going to make it really easy for you and for your clients to qualify for coverage. You answer some real basic health questions. Client can answer no to those health questions. They pre-qualified. And now we take them to an assessment. And our assessment is a true point of sale decision where we'll get your client on a phone ask them some real basic questions. We ask them to review their prescription history, which we do through our third-party underwriter. And we'll come back in a matter of minutes with a decision. In fact, you can go online with your client 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can put that same client information into our website. You can get a result in a matter of seconds. Put in your client name, address, social security number, date of birth, does ask for the height and weight and whether or not they're a tobacco user. You hit, uh, there's a little checkbox that gives us permission to run their prescription history. You hit submit, and I've had someone come back and, and, and tell us they timed it. Uh, they had a result and approval decision in a matter of eight seconds. Now, I realize speed isn't always part of it, but again, that's the path that life insurance is taking us. That's what clients have said they want in the life insurance industry. They know they need coverage. They know they should have it. They just haven't gone to the point of acquiring it, picking it up. And a lot of it is the inconvenience of it, the cost that they think exists for it. And we're trying to really eliminate any and all those obstacles in the way. Affordable premiums in a guaranteed package, in a guaranteed option like whole life insurance, with a simplified issue point of sale decision. So uh, that's kind of a recap of some of the life insurance. And again, I guess uh, what Oxford Life brings to the table and kind of why we've chosen the path that we have in the final expense market. So with that, Jeff, I'll, I'll kind of flip it back over to you to see if any other questions came up or uh, anything we can do. Well, <clears throat> I appreciate all that. Some great information, Chad. I would like to go back and talk just for a minute about uh, the underwriting process and some of the things that Oxford and uh, some of your competitors have done now with the availability of technology. Can you talk a little bit about in the event we were to try to place some business with Oxford and maybe it was denied uh, once a script check was run? How do you guys go about uh, an appeal process, if you will, if maybe a client's taking a drug that has multiple uses? How would you guys go about researching that? Yeah, that's a good a good question. So. We um, do have the ability, well, I'll back up and, and just to give you an example of what our, our process does look like. We used to do like an MIB, um, which, you know, obtained some of the client's medical records and everything else. We got away from all of that and, and really just review client prescription histories. And we figure that kind of tells us the picture that we want. And what it would do, and this is just an example, a client answers no to, to questions, but we do a quick analysis of all those prescriptions that they take. So, and this is where a lot of carriers go these days, but uh, let, let's say that I'm on uh, a depression medication and it's prescribed by my general physician and it's this much dosage. So it might score, if you will, kind of this, as opposed to this person uh, is prescribed this much dosage and it's by their psychiatrist. So it scores this. So it takes into account those prescriptions, who prescribed it, when, how much, and any and all of the things that the client takes and kind of uh, kicks back your, your score, if you will, at the end. So that's how we're able to, to determine and, and give that kind of point of sale decision. If a client is declined, um, we do have the ability where they they can get the information on, on how it was declined and make an appeal to the underwriter as far as um, the reason that they've taken a drug. We're ever evolving in that stage. Um, we used to have a more thorough underwriting appeal process. With this new design, we've moved a little bit away for, from it, but uh, trying to get back to that that lets a client kind of speak up and say, well, I take this drug for this reason. Um, but we do find in our policy that 
when a client answers no to the health questions that appear on our application, and most of those are going to be 24-month lookbacks, things like heart attack, cancer, stroke, stuff like that, 85% of the time that they've answered no to the health questions, they are approved for coverage. Awesome, awesome. <clears throat> and just to be clear, I want to go back and talk about the three basic types, uh, just as a definition term, as uh, you and I had talked about before the webinar, is really kind of a period of time that you're renting coverage for. You don't ever really develop uh, any type of cash value there. And if you were to outlive the term of that policy, there is no death benefit for uh, the beneficiaries that you listed. Whole life, which is probably what most of us are most familiar with uh, from the time that we're small children, we see the ads on television for the grow up plans and things like that that do accumulate cash value over the years and offer some options in terms of investments. And then if those two were to go out on a dinner date and have a love child, that would be universal life. And universal life uh, offers a little bit uh, as far as the best of both worlds. Typically, it's a little more affordable than your traditional whole life permanent. And then it also takes on uh, some of those benefits that there are some cash value uh, buildups there where you can take out some policy loans. So just want to make sure that those three things are clear. And then as Chad mentioned to you guys so eloquently, of those three, there's so many derivatives these days as as carriers have, have reached to meet the demands of the public and the changing product types that are, are available. But again, those are really where everything starts at those, at those three basic products. If you've got questions about those guys, or if you're, you're new to writing insurance or life insurance, uh, you ought to reach out to Messer Financial Group, get your contracts done with us. Very simple to do so through our SureLC platform. And we also have a number of individuals here in the building that are willing to help you guys do your quoting, uh, help teach you the uh, ins and outs of getting those illustrations done for those more complex cases. And that's uh, in our producer support and new business department. And we're happy to help you with that. If you don't have a contract with Oxford, I suggest that you, uh, you do take that on with us. Uh, again, Chad's pointed out some of the great benefits that Oxford provides to agents, and they really do, uh, in terms of your healthy clients, they're very, very difficult to beat as far as affordability and the types of products. I know we'll get into a little bit more of that next week, but if Chad, if you want to just kind of give us an idea of, of the product names so that maybe the folks can do a little bit of research on their own while they get ready for next week, why don't we just go through that quickly while we've still got a few minutes? Sure. Yeah, you bet. Um, we we offer life, annuity, and med sub products. So in each of those categories, and I'm going to pivot back over to the to the uh, Oxford Life website. But um, we we offer because I think it'll pull it up right here. So yeah, uh, on your screen you'll see that our life insurance we we really offer three different versions: Prosperity Select, Assurance, and Assurance One. Assurance is our go-to life insurance product. That's the traditional kind of pay-as-you-go final expense. Assurance One and Prosperity Select are both simplified issue. They're single premium life options. And each has a really, I think, powerful place in the market. And, and we're going to look specifically at some case examples on those next week. Uh, annuities, we offer really uh, a handful of products. Uh, all with income options, all with uh, multiple crediting opportunities, guaranteed rates. In fact, some of the best multi-year guaranteed rates in the industry in the way of our multi-select. That's kind of your CD alternative. Uh, then we have three different variations of a fixed indexed annuity where your uh, performance is, is tied to, most notably, the S&P 500 as far as potential return. But again, all... Uh, Growth opportunities still with guaranteed um, rate of return and really aggressive income opportunities for your client. And then uh, we offer Medicare supplement as well. And uh, in the majority of states, we offer uh, plans F, N, and G. Awesome. Awesome. And guys, <clears throat> again, if you are contracted with Messer Financial Group, uh, you should be able to uh, use some of the free quoting tools that we provide to the agents that are contracted with us. And uh, if you have, don't have access to those, excuse me, got a little <clears throat> pollen buildup here. Uh, <clears throat> you should be able to access that through uh, 
a phone call to produce support to help you register for those uh, via the Messer website. So with that, I'm going to let uh, you guys know that next week we'll be taking a look at a couple of different case studies where Chad will walk us through uh, product selection with Oxford and uh, how to go about uh, getting those issued and the things that we would talk about. Some of the slides that were shown today, we will be providing those to you guys that were with us. And as a general reminder, again, think about that from the Social Security standpoint of anyone out there today. Uh, I believe they have to have at least six quarters of uh, income uh, credit with Social Security. You only get $255, and that wouldn't go very far as far as uh, covering those burial expenses. And waiting until something actually does happen, there's a lot of emotion there. There's a lot of decisions that are probably made. Uh, without careful consideration because of the timing. So let's try to make sure that we ask those questions of our clients when we go back to do those touchbacks. Are they covered? And if they're not covered, what's most important to them? What level of coverage would they be looking for in terms of the type of funeral they would want to have for themselves or for their spouse or other loved ones? It may not be for themselves, but there may be a referral there for you guys just waiting if the right questions are asked. So hopefully we've planted a seed with you guys today that you'll go out in the field this week and start to ask those questions, and then we'll show you in a little more detail next week how to uh, apply the products from Oxford. So for us, you know, all roads lead to Oxford today. And, Chad, we really appreciate everything that you've done for us and looking forward to next week to having a great second session on this series. So, guys, want to appreciate you for your efforts in the field. Thank you for taking some time out to join us today. Again, if you haven't contracted with us, reach out to producer support. We can help you get your Sure LC profile set up and help you find Oxford there and get you appointed very quickly and get you out in the field representing this great carrier. Chad, anything else from you for today? Uh, no, just appreciate it, Jeff, and uh, we'll look forward to next week. Awesome, awesome. Guys, once again, we'll, we'll get into some more details next week with the policies and fees or anything like that that may be covered uh, with those. And hope you guys have a great week in the field and uh, talk to you next Wednesday. Thanks again for joining us. And again, if you need us here at Messer Financial Group, our telephone number is 866-568-9649. And you can either ask to speak to a marketing director like myself or to reach producer support. Our, our good friend Faye at the front desk will direct those calls and uh, we'll get you in touch with somebody that can help you increase your business. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great day out there. Thanks, Chad.